Welcome to the 8th Annual CO2 Race Car Challenge. I'm Bob Beaton, Executive Director of the Portland Area School District, and I'm delighted to have with me Mr. Tim Brandon. He's the Industrial Arts Technology teacher here at Fort Gratiot Middle School, and he is also the host school for the 8th Annual Race. Uh, Tim, welcome, and you're doing a fantastic job. We appreciate all your hard work. Uh, what are some of the uh, changes that have been made for this year to improve on the race? Every year we try to do something that's a little better. Uh, could you tell us about that? Well, this year we've added uh, a project display, some of the other work the students have done throughout the school year, and uh, the bridge testing. Uh, they build bridges in what is one of the modules in the tech lab, and uh, we're taking this evening to test them to see what's, which bridge is the strongest. Mm -hmm. Plus the fact that we're doing it in the evening this year to possibly uh, allow more parents to come and see what their students have done. And how do you feel about that tonight? What do you think about this crowd? Uh, it's a much better crowd than what we get in the morning at uh, one of the schools. We don't have as many students, but we have a captive audience during the day. Right. Well, I think it'll grow. Uh, we're very pleased and proud of the number of people that are here this evening. And uh, we've already had some cars that have gone, uh, I think the fastest one so far is 34, 34 miles, an, miles hour. an hour. And uh, we have another unique feature this year. And that is uh, through cooperation with the St. Clair County Sheriff's Department. Deputy Green is here with a radar gun. Right. And so that's quite an improvement. Yeah. To, that gives us a little more pizzazz as well as a little more accuracy on the speed. Is that correct? That's correct. We normally, you know, through using math, we can figure out the average speed the car goes for the whole length of the track. But with the radar gun, we can see how fast the car is going as it crosses the finish line. So the word of importance here is that when you're driving and you see a radar gun, you better slow down, right? That's They're going right. to get you. So we'll talk to Deputy Green here in just a few minutes, but we do appreciate the support of Dan Lane and the St. Clair County Sheriff Department in this endeavor. A little later on in the show, we're going to be announcing the, uh, not only the fastest cars, but also the best in design, best in show, and some other categories. So uh, we'll be back with you shortly to make those announcements. Thank you. Good evening once again, and I'm Brian Warren here with me from Chippewa Middle School. He's one of our outstanding industrial arts technology teachers, and uh, he's helping out Mr. Brandon this evening. And uh, we're going to ask him a little bit about the process of building these cars and also a little bit about the bridge building. So, uh, Mr. Warren, what happens? How do we get started in this? If I'm just a, a student and I come into your classroom and you start talking about this, kind of walk the audience through what happens so that we end up with cars that are going 38 miles an hour like we just had. At Chippewa, it actually starts in the seventh grade where I display the eighth grade cars for a number of weeks and they all get chomping at the bit. They want to, uh, they want to work on something like that. So by eighth grade, they're, they're asking the key questions. They're in my class. Um, we start with some mass, math, uh, force equals, acceleration equals force times mass. We work that out. We get the cars to where we think they'll perform, we test them out, and then we, uh, we race away. Uh, we build a number of different designs, everyone has their own ideas. Some people uh, approach it from a creativity standpoint, they want their car to be mm -hmm. a work of art. But uh, most of them are really, they have their eyes on that race. And they Do they wanna, really? They want to go fast. Want to go fast, all right. And the, the bridge building, did you have some entrances in the bridge building? I think we brought, uh, we brought about 25 bridges from Chippewa, and that's a real tough one. Every student wants to build this big, strong, powerful bridge, but they, uh, they sometimes they forget about the idea of efficiency. We don't mm -hmm. want to use a ton of wood to make this bridge when a half a ton will work. The same thing would be true with steel. Actually, <laughs> efficiency is very important, so uh, we try to pare it on the size, use a little bit of glue where a little bit will do. We, don't, we try not to gob it on, and that's how we get a good bridge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then, um, how is it tested? Well, Mr. Houghton, in, in the tech lab we have, a, um, we have a machine we put them on and we can crank them down until they bend and break. But Mr. Houghton made an even simpler, probably a more accurate machine where he simply hangs a, a five gallon bucket on the, um, on the bridge and begins pouring sand in there until it buckles and until it breaks. When the bridge breaks, he takes it off and weighs it and we have the, uh, the bridge's capacity. Then uh, beforehand we had to weigh the bridge and we, we measure the amount of weight Compared to how much it holds, we get an efficiency rating, and that's mm -hmm. how the bridges are, are judged. 
Well, it's been very uh, good talking to you this evening. We appreciate all your hard work. We know you put in a lot of extra hours, and it's very evident here with the excitement that's being generated tonight and the nice cars and bridges. So thank you so much. Very good. Thank you. I'm here with uh, Tom Sakaney from Port Huron South, and uh, he's one of our illustrious industrial arts teachers. And uh, Mr. Sakaney, uh, how does this really benefit students that you have at Port Huron South as well as the other middle schools? Uh, are there particular parts of it that you think really stand out that help students uh, become better learners? Yes, I do, because they get to apply um, their ideas and stuff to a practical application. They get to take their ideas they get to build their ideas, make up a, a mock-up, a racer. They get to actually see how it works in real life. Um, so it's real application. It's not just um, taking a theory and, and you know going through a formula. And this way, they actually get to actually see what's going on. They get to see which cars um, are faster because of aerodynamics or other design features. So I think it really benefits them in that way. They also get to use some creativity and it's a really good activity for these kids. Now some teachers have told me that when we take theory and we apply it that uh, classroom control is much better and much easier and therefore the students learn more. Have you had that experience? Yes I have because the kids are really involved. They are active, they are wanting to um, test their theory, see whether or not it actually um, works in the real world. So because of that, they're on task and they are really focused on what they're doing. Right. And in the meantime, they're learning math and science and a whole lot about careers. Yes, they are. Well, we sure appreciate having you and want to thank you for all your hard work. No problem. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Whoa. I'm here with Dennis Houghton, another one of our great industrial arts teachers from Holland Woods Middle School, and he's worked very hard behind the scenes this year. He's also sponsored the race in the previous times, and so uh, he kind of knows what's going on and all the work behind the scenes. So, Dennis, we'd like to say thanks uh, right off the get-go here and for all your hard work, and uh, Dennis always comes up with some creative ideas. And um, how do you feel about this year's race? Um, the biggest thing that uh, we were hoping to have, and I think we've succeeded, is that we have a lot more parents here for the first time. Mm -hmm. um, it's difficult for parents to um, get here during the day uh, according to their work schedule. So this is great to see parents here. Uh, so we're happy about that. Yes, we are. And, you know, the number that have been here and they're kind of rotating through and over to the bridges and over to the other projects. And we were just talking about uh, how maybe next year we could have everything in one gym. Yeah, I think that's a good possibility, and I think that keeps everybody, it, it, you know, when when we're in a, a lull where the cars aren't running, you know, the kids are loading up the cars, waiting for the next heat. Um, I think that would be an excellent thing to do is to, you know, have other activities and, and continue announcing things that are going on, you know. So, um, you know, this is the first time we've had it in the evening, and so we're, this is... Uh, you know, it's a learning curve to all of this, and um, I think uh, I think we looks like we're very successful so far. And I think if we do those things in addition. I think it'll be even better. Well, that success comes as a result of the hard work of many people, such as yourself, and we really appreciate all you do.
I have with me Jamie Quicksall, one of our illustrious industrial arts teachers, and he happens to be from Central Middle School. Glad you're here, Jamie, and congratulations on uh, some winners. And we really appreciate all the hard work that you've done. How's this year been going for you as far as getting these cars put together? It's been a really good experience for me and uh, also for the students, I believe. Mr. Peltz, uh, you're down at Port Huron South, and he's the principal down there. We're just delighted to have the principals here. I think we've got nearly everyone here this evening, and we really appreciate you taking the time to come out. Um, Mr. Peltz, what are some of the values that you see in having this type of program for your students? Well, you know, uh, Mr. Beaton, I've been involved in this program for about seven years, five years at the middle school now, two years at Port Huron South. I know that our kids are very excited about it when the time comes up to build their CO2 cars. You know, they have to come through with an organizational plan first, so it builds organizational skills. Uh, it, it, it builds good aerodynamic skills. They learn about all those good things about cars. Speed, you know, and it takes patience to finish a nice car. But the biggest thing, I think, is when the kids get done, the self-esteem seems to rise because they've accomplished something. And they've accomplished something very, very nice. And I. I walk in the, in the wood shop on a daily basis, and the kids say, Mr. Pills, look at my car. And I say, it's beautiful, it's wonderful. And, 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 and they're very excited about it. Well, this is one of the benefits of the program in that the student takes it literally from zero, where then they start thinking about it in their mind, and eventually it kind of goes from their brain down to their arm and comes out their arm and their hand, and they start actually fabricating it from... Uh, a block of wood. Is that true, Jamie? It starts off with a, just a thought, a piece of paper. Um, Little draft, a sketch. Just uh, thumbnail sketches is where it starts off at. Right, right. So, well, gentlemen, we're very, very pleased to have you. And uh, Mr. Peltz, we're glad you're here, and we hope you come next year. And Jamie, thanks for all your hard work behind the scenes. <laughs> have the Lee family from Chippewa Middle School with us this evening and Adam you're the big shooter tonight you got your car there with you right yep all right dad what's your name sir Glenn Glenn and who's Jennifer. this good-looking lady Jennifer all right are you gonna build a car when you get in school you just Absolutely. might can you build one better than that <laughs> well mom what do you think I think it looks pretty awesome and he was been really excited about it all right uh, Tell us a little bit about your car. Uh, how did you start out thinking about it? Or just walk us through the process that you went through to come up with this beautiful car. Well, when I, I'm in, when I was in Cub Scouts, I built Pino Derby cars. Mm -hmm. So I kind of got an idea from that. And also from like looking in booklets that Mr. Warren gave us. He's my industrial tech teacher. So you had to do a little research. Yep. OK. And. Uh, I just kind of winged it from there. If I messed up, I tried to just cut it out and try to round it off, sanded it for about like three weeks. So, okay. How did you happen to make it look a little bit like uh, maybe an arrow? Was that on purpose? Um, actually, a lot of my friends think it looks like a wasp. Okay. <laughs> so, um, I don't know, I just kind of thought it would be kind of cool. Okay. From like a lot of different years, I've seen like the CO2 car races on TV. Uh -huh. It's just kind of got an idea from that. Okay. It's pretty aerodynamic. Was that part of your research? And it's kind of thin in the middle like an arrow, and then this kind of looks like maybe the feathers on an arrow. Is that the aerodynamics? Was that part of your thinking? Uh, I tried to. Mr. Warren said that wouldn't be much of a big deal, but it was just it needed to be light. Okay. So that's why I tried to do thin in the middle because it All cut right. out a lot of weight. Okay. And how about the wheels? Why do you have the big ones in the back? Uh, the big ones in the back, that's just what Mr. Warren gave us. Okay. Um, and the and little the, ones in the front? Those are just for like, so you get less traction, less friction. All right. And so. so the opposite would be true with the ones on the back. Yeah. That gives you more traction. Yep. There you go. Well, Dad, uh, what do you think about this project? What's the value of it? Flabbergasted, I saw it. He was, we've been taking him to school early every morning, so he's been able to finish it up, and he didn't. We wouldn't let me see it. I wanted, oh, I wanted to go in. With, huh? I wanted to go in one morning and take a peek at. It. He said, "No, no, no. We're gonna surprise you at the show." So uh, great when job. I saw it, I, yeah, the finish he has on it. He obviously put a lot of work into it. And well, I was stick very around. Impressed. You I never mean, know. There are three different awards that are given out in addition to the fastest car, so you well, never just know. Just the whole, I mean, you look at these tables back here, I mean, the whole variety of designs, it's just, yeah. it's amazing what the, what the kids came up with. It sure is. And Mom, how do you feel about this? It's 
pretty awesome. And the bridge building or bridge testing that the kids built bridges, that's pretty awesome in the other room too. Right. Well, thank you so much. We really appreciate all of you coming and being a part of this tonight. Jennifer, I know you're going to build the best bridge ever, right? <laughs> all right. Thanks so much. Congratulations. Earlier in the evening, we thanked the St. Clair County Sheriff's Department for having Deputy Green here with us and use the radar gun so we knew actually how fast the cars were going. And uh, I think our fastest speed this evening was? 47. 47 miles an hour. That's about seven miles faster than we've ever had before. But uh, Deputy Green, we want to thank you so much for caring enough to come out and uh, be part of this, and we hope to have you back next year. <laughs> Okay, I'll gladly be here. All right, and what did you think of our activity this evening? I was quite impressed with the craftsmanship on the cars um, and the speeds. I didn't think that they'd go that fast. You and didn't I, believe me, huh? No, no. <laughs> and I just thought it was a good activity, good yeah. positive activity. All right, well, we do too because, once again, it pulls together math and science and design and engineering and uh, lets them have a little bit of fun and just uh, lets it come right out of the brain down the arm right out into that block of wood and then here's the results of it. So once again, sir, we appreciate you being here. Okay. Thanks so much. Folks, it's now time for the awards ceremony. Thank you for being a part of this year's, it's the eighth annual actually, CO2 challenge here at Fort Gresham Middle School. First of all, we'd like to announce the fastest racers we've had so far. In fourth place, we had Josh Ramos. In third place, Amanda Stevenson from Holland Woods. Excuse me, Josh is from Central. Amanda Stevenson from Holland Woods is third place. Second place, Andrew Mickle from Chippewa. And the fastest car we had today was Alex Kramer from Fort Gratiot Middle School. Well, how about that, folks? Good job. So Alex, you're around. Congratulations, Alex. Well done. He gets, he gets the first place trophy. Uh, so the first place fastest trophy, Alex Kramer, congratulations. And a job well done. And the traveling trophy goes to the school. So up next, we have most original design. And if, if I call your name and you're here, please come up, receive your trophy. In third place, for most original design. Leo Sresnik from Fort Graduate. Congratulations. Most original design, that was third place. Congratulations, Lee. In second place for most original design, car number 25, Hillary Oprahauser from Central. <laughs> you around, Hillary? Congratulations on second place. So in first place from Central Middle School, Christina Holloway. First place for most original design. Good job, Christina. Our next award will be the best finish. In third place from Central Middle School with the best finish, Ron Monzo. Ron, you're Ron. Well done, Ron. In second place from Chippewa Middle School, Edward Arand. Good job, Edward. Best finish, second place. Congratulations, Edward. And in first place for best finish from Chippewa Middle School, Jeremy Talmage. Um, Jeremy Talmage. You around, Jeremy? So congratulations to Jeremy. And finally, the best in show. 
And third place from Chippewa Middle School is Adam Lee. Good job, Adam. In second place for best in show from Holland Woods Middle School, Megan Lindsay. And in first place for best in show from Chippewa Middle School, John Dankenbring. So congratulations to all our winners. And thank you for participating in the 8th Annual CO2 Challenge here at Fort Gresham Middle School. And we also like to thank all the students that have assisted us. Yeah. And a big thank you to all the students who have been here assisting us with getting the cars or adding up statistics, all the things they've done. Please give a big hand to all the students who have been here. All the teachers who have been here, keep clapping for the teachers. And Channel 6 for being here all around taping the show for you guys. So thank you very much for coming, folks.